Hello everyone. Just wanted to make a video just explaining a little bit on what I do to prep my foraging items for my crabs before I place them inside the tank um, just to make them safe. Uh, we want to make sure that before we put them in the tank that they are st uh, sterile and that there's no um, bugs on them so that you don't have an infestation inside your tank so this is how i prep mines so here i have um some oak leaves um i forage them i went into the forest we usually take nice little hikes with the family and um i pick what i want i usually take my foraging book with me um this book is by stacy may you can find it on amazon it is amazing it's everything categorized all kinds of food even bark safe or not safe items um so you would just go to um where you see the item for example i'm looking at oak leaves um it tells you specifically what is safe um part of this tree um so the leaves the acorns bark and wood um all of it is safe you can um the ca crabs can have it now for example things that are not um safe or unknown would be in the gray shaded area you can see um there's different parts of this book i take this book with me every time i go foraging which is great there is actually a hardcover um copy as well um and then we have moss um, my crabs love um, pillow moss. It's great. Um, and then we have bark. Um, the crabs love to eat it. It's great for color. Um, it's great um, tanning for them um, and uh, for, for climbing as well. So what I usually like to do to prep it is when I come home, I will soak them in um, water. Um, make sure that you're using a prime you could put one drop or two inside a tray like this I have quite a few of these so when I do forage I like to separate the leaves according to what they are like I have here this is after they're all completely done um, but this process uh, first I would soak them in primed water um, and then remove all the water then I will bake them at 200 degrees um, until dry you can um, keep an eye on them and flip them every so often it does take a bit for them to fully dry especially if you put so many together if you have a longer tray um, and just put a thin layer it makes it easier now moss you cannot bake or boil moss because it will die because this is live moss so for the live moss, what you're going to be doing, I'm just going to show you an example. Um, I take a piece. I already um, put almost boiling hot water. So it's very hot water. And you're just going to pour it in a container just like this with prime. I like to put one drop of prime just to make sure that there's no um, bleach or ammonia. Or heavy metals in this because the crabs will be eating it you can see how um, right away it comes to life just because it has been dry then you're going to cover it in an airtight container for about 10 minutes um, this will make sure that um, all your bugs are dead what I like to do first before putting it in the hot water is I will put them in a really big um, bag or a Ziploc bag or a container and put them in the freezer for 48 hours to 72 hours. This will kill any bugs that um, um, are left in there. And then the hot water will um, kill anything that was left over. Okay, so that is what I do with my moss. Never boil moss because moss will die. Now for my bark, um, I always like to suggest um, to either boil it, but if it's pieces like this that are so big, you're going to bake it at 200 um, until um, for about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. You need to keep an eye on this because this um, bark will burn. So that's my process. And then I will stick it in the freezer after that for 48 to 72 hours. Okay, that's how long it would take to make sure that all bugs are dead. After um, I have baked my leaves um, and they're dry, 
I do like to um, prepare containers um, to ha um, just put them in there. Um, I do forage um, during the fall and um, the spring um, just because there's different um, things during those times. And then um, I store them for the year. So I make sure I have plenty um, for the year. Sometimes they will last maybe two. That's why I like to date them so I know how long I've had these. Okay, so they're all categorized by names. And um, if you don't have containers, you can use the gallon Ziploc bags. You can get these at the dollar store um, in a big pack. And then just um, put a label on it or just write with a permanent marker what they are. Okay. Now, um, after, let's just say you have flowers. For flowers, you will need to... Um, it's a different process with flowers. You will need to, um, run them underwater. You can put them inside a big bowl, soak them in the water. So if there's any bugs or ants or anything like that, they will float to the top and you can just remove them. Make sure that you're priming your water ahead of time. Now, um, with this, you can, if you have a dehydrator, you can dehydrate them, um, um, on your lowest setting, um, typically it would take a couple of hours, of course. Um, if you do not have a dehydrator, you can put them in the microwave. You would just put them in the microwave and you can put a wooden spoon. You can put a wooden spoon um, just so that the air can escape. You're going to put it at your lowest, lowest setting on your oven and then um, until they're completely dry. When you see that they're crispy like this and dry then they are done and then you can store them according to the way you like but this is how i um prepare my forage items if you guys have any questions please feel free to ask